I've always been interested by information storing devices like CDs, records, and hard drives. So I decided to build this wooden disc player. It's similar to a CD player in that the discs encode digital information. However, there are two major differences. First, the features on these wooden discs are much larger than CDs. You can actually see the digital information encoded as holes and non-holes on the disc. In a CD, these features are so small you can't see them with the naked eye. Therefore, CDs encode a lot more information than these wooden discs. The second major difference is the information this digital code actually represents. In a CD, the digital information represents audio. In the wooden disc, the information is a text message, like a song lyric or a quote. I've made several of these wooden discs that each encode a unique text message. The larger the disc, the longer the text message. To decode the digital information on the disc, you need the disc player. Each disc has a few magnets that enables it to snap into place on the disc player. Once the disc is snapped in, it rotates and a detector reads the binary information on the disc. After the binary information has been decoded, the text message is displayed on the bottom with the LED array. The electronics on the inside of the device can be accessed by removing the front panel, which is attached with a few magnets, and the rear panels, which are also attached with magnets. In this video, I'll talk about how the device works and some of the challenges along the way. Let's take a closer look. In the front of the device, you can see the 3D printed disc mount with two magnets connected to the DC motor. Below this mount are two detector modules. Both modules consist of a laser and photodiode, which you can more easily see in the CAD model here. If there's a hole in the disc, the laser beam passes through and no light makes it to the photodiode. If there is no hole, the light bounces off the disc and reaches the photodiode. The reason for having two detectors is all about timing. Because the disc is constantly spinning, it's difficult to know exactly when the laser is lined up with the holes or non-holes on the disc. Therefore, one detector keeps time by staying fixed on one row on the disc with holes at every position. The other detector reads in the data on the disc one row at a time. To shift to the next row, the detector moves on a stage mounted to a linear actuator. To block the laser beams passing through the disc, I have a piece of acrylic that diffuses the light and provides a way to visualize the zeros and ones being read off the disc. Reimagining the data stream off the disc was an important part of the project, so I wanted to express it in other ways too. As the data is being read off the disc, the LED matrix in the front is populated to visualize the binary information. The device also plays a MIDI note when a 1 is read. The music produced may sound random, but it symbolizes a series of 1s and zeros that actually hold meaningful information describing the text message. The wooden disc player I created has really similar hardware to a CD player. To demonstrate, I've taken apart my old CD player here. The heart of it is this part, which sits right underneath in this section here. The CD usually snaps into place like this and spins. Underneath you can see the motor for spinning the disc and right here is the detector. You see a small lens and there's a laser diode underneath for reading the information off the disc. The technique's a little bit different, it's based on interferometry, but the idea is the same of reading ones and zeros off the disc with this detector. As the detector moves, it reads a different section of the CD, and you can see the lead screw right here, and another motor for translating the stage. Looking at the back of the device, you can get a better view of the electronics. On the rear panel, I've mounted the power jack, 
power switch, MIDI jack, and USB port for uploading programs onto the Arduino. Behind the panel is the prototype board with all the components for controlling the device. With all the cables, it's difficult to understand the circuit, so I've created the schematic for those who may be interested in how the components are connected. The bottom panel is attached with four bolts. Here you can get a better look at the stepper motor driving the detector stage, the LED matrix that displays the text messages, and the Arduino Nano. Before building this final system, I built two prototypes and had to do a lot of troubleshooting. The first prototype helped me determine if the detector I designed would work. Here you can see the analog output of the photodiode. At this point in the design, I was certain building a wooden disc player with an Arduino was at least possible, but I didn't realize how many things would go wrong along the way. To give you an idea, this first prototype was completed back in April, about five months ago, so it took a long time to get the system finally working. There were so many unforeseen problems. The detector stopped working, the timing was wrong, I forgot a diode on the stepper motor controller, which threw me off figuring out other problems. I wanted to mention these problems to demonstrate all the troubleshooting and failure that goes into building pretty much anything and how important prototypes and knowing how to troubleshoot is. After I worked out a ton of issues with these prototypes, enough issues to discuss in another video, I worked on the design in Fusion 360. For the rest of the video, I'll share some clips from the CAD design and videos of the construction process. For more details on the system, check out the instructable I created. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.